Welcome to Pell City First United Methodist Church and this online expression of worship. My name is Joe Riddle. I'm one of the associate pastors here, and we are so excited that you have found us here and chosen to join us for worship. This morning, as we light the fourth Advent candle, the uh, candle of love, I invite you to pause or to grab, uh, grab a candle uh, if you have one, or to grab a ad- whole Advent wreath if you have one of those. And together we will light our fourth candle this morning. God's love is like an open door. God's love is the street light that guides us home. God's love is a warm bed to fall into. God's love is a table with room for you. God's love is a crackling fireplace is the sun that streams through the windows, is the roof over our heads and the floor beneath our feet. God's love is a home for you and for me, for neighbors and strangers, for family and friends, for enemies and partners. God's love is a home for all. Today we light the candle of love to remind us of this truth. May it burn brightly in this space and even brighter in our hearts. Amen. This morning our scripture comes from Luke chapter 1 verses 39 to 56. In those days Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy, and blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear Him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with His arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped His servant Israel in remembrance of His mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. What we read or read in our scripture this morning is Mary's song of great joy that is known as the Magnificat. It is also the answer to the question, Mary, did you know? The answer is yes. Mary did know that her baby boy would save our sons and daughters. She knew that Jesus, which means Yahweh saves, was going to do some pretty amazing things for our world. It's why she sings this song of great joy and why she says, God has shown strength, has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts, has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly, has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. It's why she says God has fulfilled God's promises. She recognizes that the baby which she carries isn't turning the world upside down. 
but it's going to turn it right side up. Of course, she doesn't come to this recognition all alone, all by herself. And I think that's important for us to note. We need one another. We need to be in community to help each other see all that God is doing in our own lives, but also the work that God is doing in the lives of those around us. We didn't read the entire story uh, today, but let me tell you what has happened before Mary sings her song of joy. First, we're told, and I'm sure you will recognize this, but we're told that Elizabeth, who is barren and too old, conceives a child. She remains in seclusion for five months after uh, conceiving her child. I found that curious. Now, I wonder if she's scared to share her good news with others. Maybe a fear that this baby also might not make it. How many times before had she thought she was pregnant and yet still didn't have a child? And so maybe this was also just a way to protect this child, uh, even to the extreme. All we know is that she was secluded for five months. And as we talked about a few weeks ago, uh, this entire time her husband is unable to speak while they're in seclusion. And until COVID, I'm not sure how many of us truly appreciated uh, this part of their story. The next thing that we're told is that in Elizabeth's sixth month of pregnancy, an angel shows up to her cousin Mary and tells her that she's going to have a baby and should name him Jesus. We get some sense of the feelings that Mary must have felt uh, with this news. The angel had to tell her, don't be afraid. There's nothing to fear. So maybe Mary was a little bit afraid. Mary also seems a a bit confused. She asked, how could this be happening to me? I can't imagine what else she must have been thinking and, and feeling A 13 or 14 year old girl, not married, pregnant, apparently speaking to angels. Um, There's just a lot going on there. So Mary does what I wish everyone had the opportunity to do. She goes to talk to one of her older relatives, her cousin Elizabeth. She finds sanctuary there. I can almost imagine Elizabeth being like that cool aunt who you always know you can go and talk to her about stuff and she always seems to have some idea of of how to help you, of how to make things okay. Or at the very least, she's not going to just scream and yell at you about the mess you're in. When Mary arrives, something pretty amazing happens. Elizabeth hears Mary's greeting and the child leaps for joy in her womb. John the Baptist always had a way of recognizing when Jesus was coming. But remember, Elizabeth had been in seclusion for five months now. This is just now the sixth month of her pregnancy when Mary shows up. I wonder if Mary even knew that Elizabeth was pregnant. I wonder how often Mary had prayed with and for Elizabeth to be able to have a child of her own. And now here she is, six months pregnant. And then Elizabeth exclaims that Mary is blessed and tells her that This child in my womb leapt for joy when he heard your voice. I think maybe, just maybe, they were able 
to help answer some of those lingering questions each one had about what was happening to them and, and around them. Is this even real? They experienced joy together because they were able to recognize the presence of God in their midst. It, it's not a coincidence. God is doing something new here. God is working. And what I love about it all, and at the same time am scared a, a bit, in a way, uh, about it all, is that they know joy because they recognize God is working. And God is fulfilling God's promises. But also, and this is kind of the scary part, God is fulfilling God's promises through them. You know, none of this story happens if Elizabeth and Mary aren't willing to do a whole lot of heavy lifting, literally laboring for the birth of God's dreams, providing sanctuary, a safe space for each other and for their children. At uh, the last church that I served, where, where we served, Ashley and I, uh, we also served foster families in our county. Uh, we were able to develop just some amazing relationships and, and got to do some really cool ministry and events with those families. And one of the ones I think was, uh, was mine, but, but really a lot of folks' favorite uh, events that we did and something I hope maybe we can do here in the future uh, was something called a Santa's workshop where we would invite the families to come for a pancake breakfast and then we would let the children shop for their siblings and their parents. We would uh, help them wrap their gifts, teach them how to wrap a gift, a present, uh, take pictures with Santa, just hang out and, and have a lot of fun. And Normally, uh, pre-COVID times, all the families would come and we would, you know, just be on the edge of uh, chaos. So it was kind of organized chaos. Um, this last year, due to COVID, we, we changed it up a bit so that one of our church families came as kind of a host. And then one foster family came and then Ashley and I were there to help guide everything along. Um, Ashley, this past year, the way it worked, Ashley would take the parents uh, to a separate space and let them just have a little bit of a breather, a little break. And then myself and the family who was from the church would, would host the kids and help them to uh, shop and, and wrap their presents and uh, just have fun. So the parents, uh, they would get a little break. They were also able to go through clothes and, and things like that, find some stocking stuffers. And also, if any of them had specific needs, uh, Ashley would run down to our new-to-care closet and get whatever they needed. Uh, so one mom came and said she needed some diapers and, and little boys' underwear and uh, maybe some other things. So Ashley ran downstairs to get that. Uh, we were busy with the kids, uh, shopping and, and wrapping, and it got to the point where we had pretty well shopped and, and found something for everyone and uh, had gotten all the presents wrapped, and we were just on the verge of where it felt like uh, we were going to lose control of these kids. So I walked upstairs just to see how much longer Ashley and the mom might need uh, and just figure out, you know, what, what were we looking for or looking at in terms of keeping these kids busy. So I went up to the space where they were in, and when I got up there, the mom was just overflowing with emotion. I could just feel feel her excitement and she told us thank you so much for doing this and then she said and I didn't even tell Ashley this until just now uh, but I just can't believe it uh, in the last week my 
my boy, and I'll call him John, her little six-year-old. He prayed to God that he could have some Paw Patrol underwear. She said, I didn't tell Ashley that, but when she came back up here just now, she had some Paw Patrol underwear that are just in his size. Talk about being a part of someone else's answered prayers. I could feel the Holy Spirit moving when she told me that. I felt joy in God's presence. And I know some folks might think, well, it's just a a coincidence. Think about all the little things that had to go right. I love it. It's just such a great reminder of how God works outside of time and how God uses so many different people. Um, John had prayed that prayer in the last week before coming to see us. But God was preparing to answer that prayer years before when God called our church, Wesley Chapel, to begin foster care ministry. And as a church, we had to collectively say yes. Everyone had to get involved and get behind that. And then everything worked out just right for us to actually have this new to care bag as a part of our ministry there. Uh, we had partnered with a local car dealership to, uh, that su- provided us duffel bags, new bags. Uh, that our little church would never have been able to afford. And so once we had that, we began collecting essentials like underwear and shampoo for when kids came into the system uh, and didn't have that stuff. And I imagine whoever it was that bought those Paw Patrol underwear, uh, they must have felt a nudge in Walmart to remind them. Because how often have we gone to Walmart and forgotten uh, the one thing we meant to get? And then, how long did that pair of underwear sit there? That pack, not picked for the other bags that we'd sent out, so they could be right where they needed to be for Ashley to pick them up and be the answer to this little boy's prayer a lot of coincidences. I also want to just mention, I I don't think God is like a wishing well. I I don't think if I pray for Paw Patrol underwear or or a new car or whatever it may be today, I I don't think I'm just going to get it. But John's foster mom also told us some of his story. And sometimes a little boy who has been abused, never been to school, is still learning to talk at six years old because the only person he had communicated with was his older sister. Never had a Christmas tree. The only present he he had ever received was a coloring book. He was told that's all he got because he had been so bad. Sometimes... A little six-year-old boy like that needs to get some Paw Patrol underwear that he prayed for. Sometimes that's the best way to hear God loves you. God is here for you. Sometimes that's the best sanctuary. Mary's song is for children like John, for people like John, those who have been forgotten, given nothing good, those waiting for God's promises to be fulfilled. It's a reminder that God is still working. I know that John's mom was, uh, foster mom, was reminded of this, and I was reminded of it much the same way that Elizabeth and Mary We're reminded of it with a feeling of great joy to be in God's presence. I hope that all of you might feel that same joy. And whatever you do, uh, whatever ways that you become a blessing for others, 
as you also work to turn this world right side up. One pack of Paw Patrol underwear at a time, one hot meal delivered at a time, one snack packed, one offer of sanctuary to those who are frightened or lonely or confused at a time. Let's pray. Holy God, our prayers are often one lovely act of seeking. We bow our heads, we close our eyes, and we seek. We seek you. We seek belonging. We seek sanctuary. And what is lovely is that we know deep in our bones that if we knock, we will find you. So today, we pause our seeking to simply give you thanks. Thank you for the Elizabeths in our lives, the ones who have been there when we needed them most, the ones who have blessed us with joy, allowing our happiness to take up space, the ones who have opened the door for us and ushered us in. Thank you not only for the Elizabeths in our lives, but for the strangers who have cared for us, for those older and wiser who paved the way before us, and for individuals who share no relation to us, but love us like family. Our lives are better because of them. Gracious God, we also pray for those without an Elizabeth in their life, for those who don't have a hand to hold in the dark, who don't have a front porch to show up on or even a porch to call their own. We pray for those in life transitions who carry that fear and anxiety alone. We pray for all who know loneliness in the face of these hardships. Wrap your arms around those individuals. Circle back again and again, dwelling tenderly in the wounds of their hearts until healing might be found. Open our eyes so that we might see the need in our own backyard. Thank you for being our safe place. Thank you for always welcoming us home. And now with joy in our hearts, we pray the words you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.